If you shoot video using C-Log on the Canon EOS R5 or R6, I would bet at some point you've probably looked at the flat, gray, desaturated preview image uh, on the back of the camera back here and have wondered, am I exposing this video correctly? Is it too bright? Too dark? I mean, it can be kind of hard to tell sometimes, right? Especially if you're outdoors and the sun is shining and it's reflecting off of the, off of the glass back here and you can't really tell what's going on. Without waveforms or false color on the R5 and the R6, I mean, how do you get your exposure right when shooting in C-Log using these cameras? Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you what works for me. And just so you know, this video is intended for viewers who do not have a lot of experience shooting video, so some of the concepts may be a little basic for some of you. But you know what? I remember well how frustrating it was when I first started getting into video, when I first started you know, trying to shoot in C-Log in order to expand dynamic range. And it was a pretty frustrating thing figuring out how to get uh, how to get my exposure just right. So in this video today, I'm gonna to share with you how I do it uh, in the hope that it helps you as well. All right, first thing obviously is to enable Canon Log on your R5 or your R6. And there are two flavors of Canon Log. There is C-Log and C-Log 3. And I'll get into the differences between them in just a minute. But if you look at the back of the camera back here in the menu and you only see uh, C-Log and no C-Log 3, it means the firmware in your R5 or R6 is out of date and you need to update it. So whenever I record video internally on the R5 or the R6, I am typically using C-Log 3 with the cinema gamut color space. I use cinema gamut because it is a larger color gamut. There is more color information available. And then I prefer C-Log3 because it does a better job of retaining highlight detail, especially in the brighter areas of the image, which is especially helpful when shooting outdoors. So typically I'm using C-Log3 and cinema gamut with a base ISO value of 800 because that is the uh, recommended ISO setting for C-Log3. And then I set my shutter speed to two times my frame rate. And then I just adjust my aperture or throw an ND filter on the front in order to uh, control exposure from there. And then there's the option to use C-Log. Now C-Log is actually very similar to C-Log3. However, it doesn't do quite as good of a job of retaining highlight detail. However, on the upside, C-Log is uh, less prone to noise in the darker, more shadowy regions of the image. So if you are shooting video in say, a darker indoor environment or really any kind of shot where there's not a bright light source where there's nothing like super bright and you need to retain detail in that area, C-Log can be uh, a really good option for that. If you're shooting in C-Log, you wanna set your ISO to 400 because that is the base ISO value for C-Log compared to 800 with C-Log 3. So then from there, when I have Canon Log enabled and I'm ready to go, I then decide how bright or dark my exposure should be depending on the type of video that I'm creating. And for me, typically that means either, uh, either my subject is you know like a human being facing the camera like I am right now, or it's a video where I'm creating a supplementary B-roll footage and the entire scene, the entire environment is my subject. Let's begin with the former. When a person is the most important thing in your shot, they are the subject like right now in this video. For me, skin tone takes priority and everything else is secondary. For example, in this video here, I exposed for skin tone and I simply let the bright sky behind me blow out because the sky was secondary. It wasn't as important. And honestly, there wasn't much I could do to control it anyway. So for a video like that, when I'm traveling, running and gunning, I don't have a monitor, I just have the camera. How did I know how bright or dark my exposure should be in order to get my skin tone looking correct? Well, the trick is zebras. Zebras, or zebras, as some of you may say, I like the sound of that better, they are available in both the R5 and the R6. And as its name implies, zebras, they, they look like striped patterns that appear over your uh, preview image here on the back of the camera. And when enabled, these patterns appear when an area's brightness in your shot falls within a specified IRE scale range between zero and 100%. Now, everything in your video, when you're creating video, everything has an IRE value. So if it's dark and shadowy, like, you know, uh, like, you know, these regions back here in this video right now, well, that's going to appear down towards the bottom of the waveform. Whereas if it's brighter, it's going to be towards the top. So obviously skin tone has its own IRE value. And one of the clever things you can do actually if you're trying to get a particular look for your skin tone, if you're doing research and trying to figure out what you like, you can just take a screenshot of that video 
and bring it into your video editor, draw a mask over it, and look at it in the waveform to see what IRE value it has. Now for me, in my skin tone, because it's towards the brighter end of the scale, I typically aim for 70% IRE. It's what works for me, it's what I think uh, looks most appropriate. But if you or your subject has a darker skin tone, a lower IRE value typically works better. So knowing that 70% IRE is my target, it's where I want my skin tone to be in my final color graded Rec. 709 footage, that means I need to target a slightly lower IRE value of 55% when shooting in C-Log. So that 55% gets stretched up to 70% when it is transformed to Rec. 709. And this is where zebras are incredibly helpful. So the first step is to enable zebras, which you can do by going to the shoot menus, the red camera icon, the very first one, and then hop over to screen number seven. There you will see zebra settings. And what we wanna do here is assign a target skin tone IRE value to zebra one. Now this value here is plus and minus 5%. So by entering 55%, that means that my uh, Zebra 1 pattern is going to display a Zebra pattern over any areas with brightness values that are between 50 and 60% IRE, which is perfectly fine. And then I would just go about exposing my shot. And that would typically mean either opening or closing my aperture or adjusting the density of my neutral density filter until I see a left slanting uh, Zebra pattern over my skin, over my face here. And by the way, if you are by yourself, this is something I do all the time and you are the subject of your own video, a quick way to check your IRE uh, skin tone values uh, in that scenario, like if your camera's on a tripod here and you're you know, making adjustments on the back of the camera, is to just kind of like hold your hand out in front of the camera uh, like this, assuming that uh, the light is you know, hitting it about the same as it would if you were standing in front of it. Just put your, uh, your hand out in front, get a reading off of that, and adjust your exposure until you see the zebra pattern. And if you do, then you're probably good to go. All right, but what about shots where skin tone is not a priority? You just wanna get properly balanced, evenly exposed footage. Maybe you're shooting B-roll, something like that. Well, the answer then is exposing for middle gray, which as its name implies, is the halfway point between black and white. You've probably seen cards like these, which are sold in a variety of shapes and sizes, usually with 18% gray card in their name. This one here is uh, flexible and durable. It's not made of paper. It's not gonna shred or break. It's a nice size as well. If you don't have one, one of these, they're pretty cheap. I will link to it down below if you're interested and you wanna pick one up. So anyway, the numerical value of middle gray on the IRE scale can and will be different depending on the make and model of camera that you happen to be using. You usually have to look up a white paper or something to figure this out. Now, according to Canon, when shooting in C-Log and C-Log 3 on the R5 and the R6, middle gray is approximately equal to 35% IRE. So if you want to expose for middle gray for just general purpose video, you may go into your zebra settings here and for zebra level one, set this to 35%. Then again, like earlier when exposing for skin tone, it's simply a matter of enabling zebras, looking at the live preview back here, and then adjusting your exposure until you see the zebra pattern over the most important areas of your shot. By the way, worth noting, some videographers prefer overexposing middle gray in their log footage by around one stop, a technique commonly referred to as ETTR, or exposed to the right, you may have heard of this before, in order to help avoid noise and to place more of the image's information uh, towards the midtones, pulling up those darker shadowy regions in their shot, and then pushing them back down later in post. So if you wanna do that, well, you could just bump up your zebra level here a little bit to like 40 or 45% and then expose for that. And then you are exposing for middle gray at around one stop over. Now, whether you are exposing for skin tone or middle gray, uh, you may start to get a little bit concerned about your highlights, especially if you are brightening your exposure, uh, the brightest parts of your image, because those areas could easily blow out. Well, one of the things you may have noticed in the zebra settings here is that there is an option for zebra level two. And this we can use in order to keep an eye on highlights while we are adjusting our exposure for zebra level one. Now, Zebra Level 2 is a little different because it does not use plus or minus 5%. Instead, Zebra 2 displays a pattern at and above its assigned value. For example, with uh, Zebra Level 2 here, if I assign a value of 80%, 
The live preview will then show a right slanting pattern in order to differentiate it from zebra level one with any brightness values that have an IRE value of 80% or higher. In other words, 80% to 100%. Now I picked 80% here because in my experience, 80% is a good upper threshold for C-Log. 80% in C-Log transforms to around 90% IRE when converted to Rec. 709, which means any highlights that are at or below 80% when shooting in log should not clip in camera. So here are some common scenarios when you have both Zebra 1 and Zebra 2 enabled, and you're looking at the back of the screen back here. If you see no Zebra patterns at all, it means that your image is underexposed because everything is landing below middle gray or your target skin tone value, and those pixels are only going to get darker when they are converted to Rec. 709. If you look at the back of the screen back here and all you see is Zebra Pattern 2 and none of uh, Zebra Pattern 1, well, your image is definitely overexposed and you need to be bringing that exposure back down. If you see a mix of Zebra Pattern 1 and 2, then you are in the right ballpark. And typically then it's a process of just trying to find the right balance between the two and deciding creatively how important the areas highlighted by Zebra 2 are. For example, if you want to protect your highlights because there is detail there that is worth capturing, there's something important, well, what you could then do is just darken your exposure until the Zebra 2 pattern disappears and then push it back up a little bit until you see some of that Zebra 2 pattern once more. If on the other hand, the brightest area in your shot is a light source like you know, the sun or like, you know, one of these light bulbs back here or some kind of specular highlight, the viewer wouldn't expect to see any detail in those areas anyway. So they're not quite as important. Generally speaking, overall, I mean, the main goal here is getting Zebra Pattern 1 to appear in the most important areas in your shot. And if you can't control what's happening with the brightest and the darkest areas, which is a very common thing, especially when shooting outdoors, well, I mean, just let them do what they're going to do and focus your attention on Zebra 1. Make sure that you get that right, either for skin tones or for middle gray. All right, so now that you have Zebras enabled and you know how to use them, there is a much faster way to enable and disable them as needed, and that is to assign Zebras to a button on the camera body. Now, what I would recommend doing is just picking a button on the camera body that you rarely, if ever, use for its intended purpose. And for me, that button, without a doubt, is the depth of field preview button here on the front. I, I've never used it in any camera. I don't know, maybe I'm missing out on something. You know, say I'm standing in front of the camera here and the screen is turned around uh, this way towards me and I need to check my levels, see, you know, where my skin tone is landing, something like that. Well, I can just reach out and just push the zebras here on the front see them on the preview screen and quickly enable and disable them. Another optimization tip, if you happen to use the R5, is to take advantage of its custom video modes. The R6 here, unfortunately, only has one, but the R5 supports three. And you can have custom zebra settings saved with each. So for example, you could have custom video mode one set up with zebras prioritizing skin tone and custom video mode two set up with zebras for middle gray, plus whatever other video settings you most commonly use. All right, so in my experience, even when being super careful using zebras, footage can oftentimes turn out just a little bit brighter or darker than expected. And that's perfectly okay and normal because I mean, the goal here really isn't absolutely perfect exposure in every shot, but rather getting your exposure close enough to perfect so that you're only having to make small changes thereafter. Now to transform that C-Log and C-Log 3 footage to Rec. 709, you can of course just download Canon's free official Rec. 709 LUTs. You will find them on the download page for both uh, the R5 and the R6, I'll put links to them down below in case you need them. And then you can apply uh, those LUTs and then adjust exposure yourself in order to get uh, the balance just right between all the different uh, videos that you are editing. But if this is something you find yourself spending quite a bit of time doing, I know I used to all the time, I created a pack of uh, Rec. 709 exposure correction LUTs designed for both the R5 and the R6 that appropriately and accurately adjust exposure when that footage is converted from C-Log or C-Log 3 to Rec. 709. These LUTs are simply like a faster, easier way to balance exposure before you do any additional color grading. And if that sounds like something of interest to you, uh, there will be a link in the end card of this video and there will also be a link down in the description so you can uh, check them out. 
So overall, even though neither the R5 nor the R6 support waveforms or false color, it'd be great if they did, but they don't, it is possible to use zebras on these cameras to better evaluate your exposure and get it near perfect in camera when shooting and log. And by the way, the good news here is, if you learn something new from this video today, that knowledge can now be applied to using proper waveforms and false color for that matter, if later you happen to get an external monitor or perhaps pick up one of those cinema cameras like the new R5C, because all of the same principles regarding IRE values for a skin tone and middle gray, it's all the same. It applies there as well. So I hope this video was helpful. And by the way, I would love to hear from you. If you have a tip, if you have a particular technique, a particular thing that you do when evaluating exposure, when shooting in log, that works for you and makes it easier uh, for you to get your exposure right in camera, would love to hear your tip, would love to hear your approach. Please feel free to leave a comment down below. And hey, if you learned something new from this video, if it was helpful, please take a second and give it a thumbs up down below. And if you'd like to hang out with me again, I upload videos just about every week on this topic. And sometimes I also upload videos from the field when I go out and create new landscape photography work. If, uh, if all this is of interest to you and you'd like to uh, do this again, uh, subscribe to this channel down below. And uh, that's it for me. Thanks so much for being here, everyone. I'll see you in the next one.